for Donald Trump a week before the election, touting his own hotel, stopping during the busy campaign home stretch, and talking about how it was the best thing next to the White House. Now that hotel tonight with Donald Trump as president is a new flashpoint. Critics alleging a major conflict of interest. It's a way for foreign governments as well as lobbyists to ostensibly get in Donald Trump's good graces. They can put money into the property that ultimately goes to him. And the National Republican Congressional Committee is now, get this, holding a lottery for donors to win a trip to that hotel. This is similar to a deal you may have heard about with Republican attorneys general who went to Mar-a-Lago. Big donors, over $100,000 a pop, got to attend a dinner there at Trump's resort, and they got to be in close quarters with top law enforcement officials. Now, this entire issue is one our next guest, former Senator Russ Feingold, has been warning about and leading on for years. Feingold, at one point, was synonymous with campaign finance reform, McCain-Feingold, as he sounded the alarm on an issue the White House is clearly struggling with today. When Congress debates the issues that affect your lives, you have every reason to wonder if campaign money plays a role in the decisions we make. Wealthy interests have too much power in our political system. The influence of money in politics is too strong. And we understand that the system has to change. Former Wisconsin Senator Russ Feingold, co-author of McCain-Feingold, is here. When you look at these issues today, do you see them as issues of law, because the Supreme Court has obviously made it harder to deal with corruption? Or do you see these as uniquely issues of people, um, because we've never had a president choose to run a business while president and basically flout any notion of traditions around nepotism and conflicts of interest and all of this stuff? Well, Ari, thank you for having me on the show. I, I see it as a matter of law. I see it as a matter of, of morality. I see it as a matter of national pride. Uh, you know, the building that he's turned into this hotel, uh, which is for, for sale now, basically, to the highest bidder, uh, it's a great old post office building. It's part of the landscape here in Washington, near the mall. Uh, and he turns it into this kind of a, a shameful thing, uh, where special interests can buy access so close to the Capitol, and apparently the National Republican Party is happy to participate in it. This is really against the traditions of clean government uh, that we need to return to in this country and that we are very far away from under the Trump administration. Do you think Donald Trump doesn't get it? or just doesn't think that these rules apply to him. He, he famously said on January 11th, and I'll play this for you, that you know he, he could run everything at the same time, no problem. Take a, take a listen. I could actually run my business. I could actually run my business and run government at the same time. I don't like the way that looks, but I would be able to do that if I wanted to. Your view? My view is he doesn't care uh, about the ethics. He doesn't care about the law. He, his lesson, unfortunately, is because he became president, is that he can get away with whatever he wants to do. And so if he wants to sell access like this a few blocks from the U.S. Capitol, he figures, why not? Uh, somehow there has to be accountability here. When you say Somehow the American access, people have to stand up and say, we don't want a president who is uh, so obviously corrupt. Senator, when you say a uh, sell access, your view is that that's a deliberate part of the business strategy of the D.C. hotel? Well, it may well be deliberate, and I'll tell you, the message to foreign countries and foreign interests and foreign businesses is don't work through our government and our laws and our system. You can get there another way. Go down to Florida or go down to the post office building here that's now the Trump Hotel. It's a lot easier and frankly it undercuts our national security because it tells people that our government really isn't on the level under Donald Trump. Our government's for sale under Donald Trump uh, and he's happy to make as much money as he can and doesn't seem to care whether or not some illicit interests get special access that the rest of us of course would love to have. Uh, the other big story on corruption in this past week was the mistrial in your former colleague, Senator Bob Menendez, uh, you know, in New Jersey. And there was a lot of evidence of gifts. The question was whether gifts under the narrower Supreme Court standard are enough. Do you have a view of that? Do you see that as something that uh, was close to the line? Obviously, I know, as you do, that, that uh, we have a tradition of respecting the outcome here, and, and it was a mistrial. Um, but separate from the verdict. Uh, was it problematic, uh, as the author McCain-Feingold, to see a Democrat there taking so many gifts? Well, you know, John McCain and I first worked on banning gifts for members of Congress. That was uh, our first initiative that passed back in the mid-90s. And we also did campaign finance reform. So what you've identified here are two of the things that really are cancer on the system. 
uh, gifts to members of Congress that uh, can be personal in nature and that are, of course, illegal but still may occur, and then also unlimited campaign contributions. This is why we have to put the genie back in the bottle mm -hmm. and do something about these the, super PACs the question, that are destroying the system. Was that, was that bad judgment by Senator Menendez's part? Well, I think he'd be the first to say it was probably bad judgment, but I'll let the courts decide whether or not it's, it's something beyond that. Senator Russ Feingold, uh, you've been a leader on this for a long time, and there's a lot of talk about the swamp, so I appreciate you joining us tonight. Great to see you, Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.